Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about abradable coatings, what they are, and how you can benefit from them. An abradable coating is a coating that's applied to a component to tighten its operating clearance while offering protection against metal to metal contact. Abradable coatings have excellent conformability and have been used in the aircraft industry for over 50 years. In the automotive realm, we've been using them on turbochargers, superchargers, and oil pumps. However, today's focus will be on the use of abradable coatings on piston skirts. My experience with abradable coatings began with my racing out at the Bonneville Salt Flats. The classes are highly dictated by engine displacement. For example, the Toyota 2JZ comes from Toyota at just under 183 cubic inches. If you take that engine block and you hone it just 10 thousandths of an inch over, you have to bump yourself to the next engine displacement class. In order to avoid being bumped to the next engine displacement class, we were honing the engine block the minimum amount it needed to have a fresh surface for our rings to seat on. However, this led to excessive piston wall clearance. We applied a thick abradable coating to the piston skirts. This got us back to the clearance range we wanted while avoiding the additional expense of a custom slightly oversized set of pistons. Now let's take a minute to talk about the conformability aspects of abradable coatings. Earlier in the video, we talked about abradable coatings being used in the aircraft industry. Setting the running clearance on a turbine engine is far more complicated than setting the running clearances in an internal combustion engine. So what the manufacturers would do is apply a thick abradable coating that through the engine's operation would wear away offering the ideal running clearance. The same ideal running clearance that the turbine manufacturers are experiencing with abradable coating can be had with a piston to wall relationship inside of your engine. For example, if the manufacturer suggests that you should have five thousandths of an inch of piston and wall clearance, you would apply the abradable coating to where you'd have just over one thousandths of an inch. As the engine was run, following the proper break-in procedure, that piston would be lapped to that cylinder bore, providing an ideal shape. Having a perfectly shaped piston skirt is going to offer the most uniform, strongest hydrodynamic wedge of oil, protecting the piston and the cylinder wall from scuffing. Once scuffing begins, you basically erode the high points on your crosshatch and the high points on the piston, and then there's no longer a reservoir present for oil to collect in, lubricating the components. Furthermore, the porosity of the coating helps retain oil. So if you look at the coating under a microscope, it looks kind of like a carpet. So you've got all these peaks and valleys, and in those valleys, you're gonna have good oil retention, further protecting the cylinder wall and keeping the rings sealed on a coating of oil. Another added benefit of a perfect piston wall clearance is the stability of the piston. Remember, if the piston is rocking in the bore, it's making the ring set work harder to stabilize and promote a seal. So in short, the more stable the piston is, the more stable the ring set is, the better the sealing, the more power the engine makes. It's worth noting that it's critically important that you follow the break-in procedure. Much like bedding in a set of new race brake pads, you're gonna be loading the piston against the cylinder wall, taking advantage of the coating's conformability to provide that perfect shaped piston skirt. I've been using line-to-line -line coatings in South Carolina, and when you get your pistons back from them, they provide an instruction sheet. If you follow those instructions, you should experience the same good results I do. On the table, I have two examples of pistons that have been coated. This one here is out of a 2JZ making nearly 2000 horsepower. As you examine the skirt of the piston, you can see that the coating has worn away, but the way that it's worn is not completely uniform. That's because the shape of the piston during heat and stress does not stay completely uniform. But what you can see is that there's coating intact throughout the entire skirt and the area that's perpendicular to the piston pin where it would normally scuff they're still coating intact and all of the oiling grooves are still intact on the piston, whereas an uncoated piston would normally start to scuff by then. This piston here is out of an engine that was run for a short period of time, experienced a problem, we took the engine apart, realized that it had too much piston wall clearance, and again, we used that coating to get me back to the target piston wall clearance I wanted to reach without having to spend the money on another set of custom pistons. I've used these coatings over the past few years with good results. So whether you're trying to build the best engine possible or salvage a set of pistons that measure a little bit small, the abradable coatings can work for you. I'll be using these coatings on other components and we'll share the results with you moving forward. Thanks and have a good day.